Hello guys and welcome to this video all about Microsoft Teams and the latest updates that are coming soon. Welcome along to this video all about the latest Microsoft Teams updates that have been announced at Microsoft Ignite over in Orlando, Florida. There's been a real big buzz around this. One of the big updates that we've all been anticipating is finally out. I can't believe it's finally out, we were able to use it, but I'm not gonna tell you what that update is just yet, because I'm gonna go on to some of the other updates first. One of the updates that I've liked the look of is this new tasks that come into Microsoft Teams. This task is going to incorporate our tasks from Microsoft To Do and our tasks from Microsoft Planet. It's going to merge these into one view within our Teams application. It means we're going to be able to create new tasks within this view and these are going to sync back to To Do and To Planner. But it also means we've got a new way of managing our tasks on a daily basis. We're not going to have to go into any other application and we know what tasks we have in our team are incorporating both of these different applications into one. Another thing I'm really excited about is this multi-window functionality within Teams itself. It means we're gonna be able to open up different parts of Teams in a different window. So if we're working on a document, we're gonna be able to open that up in a new window. If we're in a meeting, we're gonna be able to pop that meeting out into a new window while still accessing all our other functions in the background within Teams itself. If you use multiple screens as well, you're going to be able to pull up your meeting onto a bigger screen and still have your Teams on your primary screen in front of you. This is going to bring great new ways of multitasking within Teams and new ways of productivity within Teams itself. If you're like me, you could be a member of multiple Teams within Teams itself. So one of the good things that are coming out is this new pinned channels. So we're gonna be able to pin our favorite channels within our Teams list to the top of the list so we know we've got quick access through those channels. This is gonna bring a great way of productivity within Teams because you no longer have to scroll through your big long list of channels. You're gonna have your pin channels at the top there for quick access. This is gonna be a brilliant way to be able to keep up to date of what's happening across multiple Teams within one part of Teams itself. Another new update is the ability to share emails from within Outlook to a team channel. Yes, currently we can do that by forwarding on our email to our channel email address, but it's gonna take away the need of creating those channel email addresses and having to forward it on. So within our Outlook application, we're gonna have this new shiny button saying share to Teams. We're gonna be able to click onto that button and it's gonna share that email into our team channel. And it's gonna give us the ability to start collaborating around that email. So if you've got an email come in that you need to talk to the rest of your team members about, ask advice, if it's a project it might be, you need some input from others. You're going to be able to click on that button, share that email into your team channel and then collaborate in that space within your team. Meetings within Teams, another way of communicating within your organisation. If you aren't using meetings within Teams, I'd definitely consider checking it out. But if you are using Meetings in Teams, you're gonna love this one. Live captioning is coming to Meetings in Teams. You're gonna be able to include everyone within your organization now with live captions within Teams. Microsoft have accessibility needs at the forefront of all the way their products and the way they're developing things. And this is exactly what is needed within Meetings in Teams. That live captioning so we can include everyone within our institution and our organization within these meetings now. And prior to setting up a meeting, we're going to be able to say who our presenters are and who our attendees are. So this is going to be brilliant. So when we're in a Teams meeting at the minute, we can't differentiate those presenters and those attendees. So now we're going to be able to say, yes, I'm going to allow these users to present in this meeting. And yes, these people are my attendees. And you can do that all from within setting up of your meeting. Now, the big one, the one we've all been waiting for. For months, we've been anticipating this update and I think it deserves a drum roll. Yes, you are right. Private channels is coming to Microsoft Teams. You heard me right, private channels. Hallelujah, we're gonna have private channels finally within Microsoft Teams. This is gonna bring so many new ways of working within our team itself, and it's gonna stop the needless creations of extra teams that don't need to be created. 
For those of you that don't know what private channels are, what you're able to do is within our team, we can create a channel within there and we can specify who has access to that channel. So it means we can specify who can see the conversations and the files within that channel. Something to note though, as a team owner and you allow team users to create these channels, these private channels, you as the owner of your team, you're not automatically added to these private channels. So something to note, if you are looking to use this feature, do make sure that you select who you want to be able to create these private channels and note that as a team owner, you can't access these private channels unless the person that creates these private channels invites you into it. So when a user creates a private channel, that means that user is the owner of that private channel. When a private channel is created, it's actually creating its own SharePoint site collection in the background. So as we know, when we create a normal team, that creates its SharePoint site collection. Whereas when we create a private channel, it's creating its own separate site collection. This is to do with the permissions. So as we create this private channel, what it's doing, it's creating this site collection with those specific permissions around who's allowed access to that channel. So that SharePoint site will sit separately from your team site. What this does mean is as a team owner and you want to overview all the files within your, your team, you're not going to be able to see that private site, that private channel files. So as you open up your SharePoint environment of your team and go into the documents location, you're not going to see those files within that document location. The reason behind that is to do with the special permissions that we're specifying when we're creating this private channel. As we know, we don't like to mess around with permissions within our SharePoint area when it's linked to a team site because we could end up breaking it. So what this is doing is creating its own SharePoint area that's going to have those permissions within it. Thanks for joining me today, guys, on this video. I'd love to hear from yourselves on what update you're most excited about. Just drop a little comment below on what, what you're looking forward to seeing or maybe how you're using Teams yourself. Remember to give me a little thumbs up, give me that like, and also subscribe to this channel for all my latest videos. Until next time, see you soon.